my name wrong. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. All right. Hi, guys. I'm Molly Jane from CoinMarketCap, and we're here today to talk about band protocol. We'll be having another AMA, and I have my guest here, Stravis. You could introduce yourself for our YouTube, Twitter, chat audience. For sure. Thanks, Molly. Hey, guys. Um, I'm the CEO of, uh, and co-founder of Band Protocol. Um, my name is Sarawis. Um, a little hard to pronounce <laughs> from Bangkok, Thailand. Um, quick background about myself. Um, I'm an engineer by training. So you know, I did computer science for my undergrad and then I did my management um, for my master's degree at both at Stanford University. So I used to live in the Bay Area. Um, and then I moved back to my country, Thailand, you know, work as a management consultant for two years um, before you know, turning full time into cryptos. Um, and I, I guess my journey began in 2013 when I you know, studied cryptocurrencies, you know, cryptography back then in 2013 at Stanford um, with Dan Boney. That's sort of when I sort of stumbled into Bitcoin and my two other co-founders um, because um, they were at MIT and MIT did a free airdrop of Bitcoin. Um, and that's sort of how we sort of got to know each other because you know, Thai communities in, in the US is really small, um, particularly those that are interested in Bitcoin. Um, there's really like three or four of us. Right? Um, and then you know, we started to get together around 2015, 2017, start looking around you know, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies um, I started off as an investor myself, so I invested in a lot of the tokens um, back in the days, 2016, 2017, um, before you know, we filed Band Protocol in 2017. All right, so the way this is going to work is anyone that is listening, watching right now can post a question either on CMC chat, which is quinmarketcap.com slash chat slash AMA, or they can do Twitter or YouTube, which is more boring, I think. The CMC chat's more fun, but I'll start with a, the first question from the audience from the CMC chat. This is from user KJ, 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 who asks, there is something called data set token in a band. Doesn't this factor cause inflation in band economics? Sure. Um, so actually, th those are actually um, outdated information a little bit. Um, you know, we used to have a data set in our first version of the band protocol. Right. Um, so a quick history for for the newcomers. Um, we launched our first solution on top of Ethereum's um, about ten months ago, along with Binance. Right. Um, and and after that, uh, after that, uh, you know, for a few months, we've been talking to a lot of partners, DeFi, gaming, gambling, the apps on top of you know different blockchain. And we quickly realized that our first version um, wasn't suitable enough for a lot of these different use cases, particularly because of the data set token as well. It add a lot of complexities. It adds a lot of um, you know, complexity for end users, for the, the app developers to pay fee. Um, and that's why in our new version, the band chain that we recently launched, we got rid of all the data set tokens and really have band tokens as the main tokens for, uh, for staking. So what's the importance of the role of staking on band chain itself? Right. Um, so if you talk about Oracle, right? Oracle is such an important infrastructure because we have the role to connect you know, off-chain data and API to smart contracts so that they can use this data within their logic, right? Now, it's really important that for a decentralized application to use a fully decentralized Oracle because if your Oracle is centralized, then essentially you are centralizing your smart contract as well, right? Defeating the whole purpose um, of using it in the first place. Um, and that's why, you know, in our band chain, we require every data providers or the validators in our network to stake the band tokens as a collateral, right? In order to perform work, which is bringing the data in. If they act maliciously, if they have downtime, if they have double, you know, they double sign the block, they will get this token slash, right? And this is really important um, because the fact that they have skin in the game and they have a really big economic incentive it's guaranteed that they will act you know, in a good way and they will act as a good data um, providers or validators on our network. And this is actually not true for every other Oracle, right? And this is actually really important in the band chain itself. All right, I'm looking for some, just some more audience questions. I see one from our YouTube channel, which his name is da 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 Batman asks, um, Link is being used as the default Oracle in some DeFi platforms. How is Band looking to capture some of this market? Sure. So of course, you know, Chainlink is the is the is the first player with a lot of first mover advantage, right? They're being used by a lot of the major players. Um, I think for Band, um, we don't look at at you know other Oracle as a competition. Um, 
for us, there's a lot of blue oceans as you know, DeFi is developing. There's a lot of um, growing number of DeFi, not just on top of Ethereum, but across different other blockchain, right? You're seeing a lot of this you know, um, layer one that are hitting the market now, whether that be, you know, Polkadot, whether that be, you know, Solana, um, Celo, you know, Nia is, is going to be launched. You know, a lot of these different blockchain that are scalable will also require Oracle, right? Um, recently, we also announced partnership with Waves um, and Icon as well as the DApps on top of them, DeFi on top of them. So that really show, you know, that there are niche market and there are markets to serve across this different blockchain. Um, I don't think it's a winner take all. So, you know, we do have a plan to, to sort of um, work with a lot of these growing um, numbers of applications, um, as well as, I mean, if you look at the DeFi on top of Ethereum, right? They have a lot of money locked in that. Last I checked, it's probably like five, $6 billion, right? It doesn't make any sense for these big application to rely on one single Oracle solution um, because you know essentially you're outsourcing all your securities to one company, right? And as you grow and as the market demand more decentralization from you, you will need more Oracle to help secure um, you know, your data and your smart contract. So in the long term, I do think that there are plenty of room um, for both to coexist. So this is kind of, maybe it's the same question, but just in case you have anything to add, Supple Murdas asks, how do you see your chances on competing with Chainlink given the stronger technical abilities Band has referring to speed, cost, scalability, and flexibility? So that's kind of a biased question, but- <laughs> It is actually it. a quite biased question. Um, <laughs> I, I wouldn't directly compare ourselves to Chainlink. I think Oracle has multiple design. You know, in, in the blockchain space, there are always trade-off, right? Uh, you know, just like how layer one have different trade-off between decentralization and scalabilities, you know, we have different trade-off in Oracle solution as well. I do think that different Oracle will, will, will make that conscious decisions. And again, you know, for different applications, they will require this different trade-off. So for example, you know, we champion ourselves as a really scalable solution. We are able to address, you know, uh, data requests within six seconds. Our cost is much cheaper than, you know, Ethereum based Oracle. And that means we are able to serve all this data to application that require a lot more scalable data requests. Imagine if they need data every 30 seconds, right? If that's on Ethereum, you know, the gas fee is crazy, right? Last I checked, it's like 200 where um, it's way to get anything through, right? So, you know, there are niche market for us to serve, that's for sure. So here's a more I mean, this probably will require a longer answer, but it's from someone named Daniel Kaltman. Can you walk us through BAN's roadmap for the rest of 2020 and beyond? But you don't have to go probably, you know, <laughs> sure. 100 years gonna, into the Otherwise, future. it's going to be 30 minutes and consume the whole thing. <laughs> um, I think briefly, right, if you look at what we have done so far, we have iterating a lot in terms of our protocol, right, launch the BAN chain. And now we recently list on you know, global exchanges. The next stage that we are going to be focused on for the rest of the year is simply adoption. Right. Um, now that our tech is ready, now that you know we are on a global stage, um, we are going to be laser focused on driving adoption of band chain, driving on chain revenue from data requests, um, and obviously optimizing securities of our Oracle. Right. So over the next few months, you know, we're going to be working with a lot of our partners that we have been working with for the past few months. Um, a lot of these will move from testnet into production mode. Right. A lot of these new applications that you guys will see. And so we are really excited um, for the rest of the year. Um, you know, we recently doubled our integration team um, simply because of all this you know, growing DeFi, growing DApps across different blockchain. Um, and so we're really excited for that. Um, so yeah, in the medium term, driving adoption, you know, really laser focus on that. Um, in the long term, I think, of course, adoption, you know, will continue to come. Um, more importantly, in terms of the protocol level, um, we are, you know, we're just beginning, right? Um, Oracle right now, most of the Oracle solution deal with, you know, basically query data from public API, or in some cases, you know, you know, purchase a key for private API and then, you know, try to access that. It's not a really scalable way to do that. Um, so us internally, we have a research team who work particularly on band chain itself. There's a lot more in the roadmap for us to work on. If you look at our roadmap, we have four phases um, and now we only add phase zeros. <laughs> um, so it's just the beginning. Um, over the next few years, we're going to be optimizing a lot for that, you know, how to, actually query data, not just from public API, but from private API, as well as let's say authenticated API, right? Imagine for example, if smart contract um, want to be able to execute um, and issues let's say an order that say, hey, person B has to transfer money um, from bank account B to bank account A in the real world, right? Oracle will need to act as an output from the blockchain world to the bank, 
right? And the bank need to be able to verify that the smart contract and the Oracle that, you know, really relay that message have the authentication to actually issue that order, right? How do you do that in a private manner? How do you do that in a safe manner? Um, that's actually a really tricky question. Um, and that's something that we've been um, actively researching um, and, and really bullish on the next few years. So now I have another one from CJ and this one will probably be a lot shorter is, uh, do you plan on visiting any conferences and meetups in Bangkok in the next few weeks? No, Bangkok? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we're in Bangkok, Thailand. You know, we have seen zero cases for COVID. So we can pretty much, you know, go around. Unfortunately, can't go to other countries. Um, otherwise, I would, you know, um, just like last year. Uh, but yeah, if, if things open up, you know, I'm really open to, to talking to conferences. I think it's really helpful um, to connect to different people, you know, different stakeholders. Um, and that's really important for us to build communities uh, through that way as well. Great. I wish that where I was had zero cases of COVID, but that's a different story. Um, here's another one from Matthias Heiss. Heiss, eh? not sure. How can projects benefit from using different Oracle solutions? For example, using Link, Band, and Teller. Would it be more secure? Well, would be more secure, right? Since you won't have a single point of failure. I think you had touched on this before, but if you have anything else to add. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, um, again, if you have more Oracle, I think there's a trade-off, right? Uh, in the sense that if you use just one Oracle, you're depending on that, right? Now, if you use too many Oracle, again, it adds complexity to your code. It adds more cost to your code, right? Um, and complexity is, is always bad in, if you talk about smart contract. As you know, there's, if there's a bug, you know, there can be, you know, really, really serious consequences of that, right? So there's a balance, right? Um, where, where, where they strike, whether that be two Oracle, whether that be two Oracle plus some centralized Oracle from the team. You know, we have seen some of these discussion along with many different DeFi. Um, and I think, you know, I'm excited to see how industry will flow, um, you know, will sort of grow and involve into, into one standard eventually. Um, but yeah, I think, I think I definitely bullish that a lot of Oracle can coexist, that's for sure. Well, we have another one from the CMC chat, which again, see uh, coinmarketcap.com slash chat slash AMA for anyone watching uh, from uh, KJ, 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 who asks, although band protocol currently receives ether query fee, how will you respond to queries from EOS, Comos, and others later? Right. So actually, that's not true anymore. So like I said, one, we already migrate everything to BAM chain, right? Um, this BAM chain is essentially our independent blockchain um, that is built based on the Cosmos SDK, right? Um, and, and with that, every data request happened on the BAM chain is being paid by the BAM tokens, right? Not any other tokens um, in other network. Um, the way it works is if you're from EOS, if you're from, you know, um, Cardano, you know, from Ethereum, you submit a data request to band chain, pay in band tokens. Once you get the data back from the band chain, then you essentially relay that data along with the proof that is actually being valid, you know, side by band chain validators, and then submit that into the Ethereum blockchain, into, you know, Cardano blockchain, into EOS blockchain, whatever, wherever you want to use that data, right? We build bridges to every other blockchain so that they can consume our data easily and can the, our data can also be um, verify, right? So we're not be, we don't we don't require anyone to pay in their native um, blockchain tokens. Got it. Next is from Matthias again. Uh, Bandchain is blockchain agnostic, right? How do those integrations work with different blockchains? And besides DeFi, where do you see the biggest chance of adoption for Band? Sure. Um, so the first question, um, I actually touched on from the previous question, right? Um, we essentially built this like client verification. Um, think of it as a smart contract on the on the destination blockchain, like Ethereum. Uh, it has a job to say if I request, I receive the data, I will. I have the job to verify that it's actually come from band chain and it's actually being signed by the right set of validators on top of band chain, right? Essentially verify the validity of the data before it being consumed. Right. So we built that across different blockchain, and that's why we call ourselves cross-chain um, Oracle solution. Right. Um, if you look at the work that we've done so far, Waves and Icon, there's, an, there's actually a really easy explanation of how it works um, right into the developer documentation. So you can check out, you know, if you're a developer on top of Icon, you can check out the documentation, and there's a section on Oracle, and the Oracle does a band protocol. Right. Um, so that's really easy for developers to follow. Um, on the second question around where we see we're growing, not just in DeFi, right? Um, I think DeFi is, so there's two parts to this. DeFi itself is actually quite big, right? When we talk about DeFi, most people talk about stable coin, like Maker or Neutrinos that we integrate with, um, or they talk about lending market or money market, right? Like Compound, Aave, right? And a couple more um, solutions that are coming. 
Um, there's actually more categories than that, right? For example, margin trading, like PSRX, there are things like option and derivative, right? You start to see a lot more of these, like, you know, decentralized perpetual swap that are coming to market. You know, I, I can say that we have seen more than 10, 20 um, of such projects that are coming to market and they will require Oracle as well for the funding rate. Right. You also see synthetics um, tokens. Um, so you know, obviously synthetics is one, um, but there are you know three, four more other projects on different blockchain that try to do something similar in terms of creating a token that mirror you know real world asset price. Right. Um, so that oracle would be needed for sure. Um, there's also insurances. Right. Nexus Mutual. A lot more of these uh, are coming to market. So DeFi itself has a lot of room to grow from here. Now, apart from DeFi, um, there's also other categories. Um, what I'm really bullish on is essentially gaming or prediction market, right? Um, gamings will require, you know, random number generators. It will require some real world event um, to be reported onto um, the blockchain, right? And we're seeing a lot of numbers, a growing number of these applications that will move toward productions in the next few months. And, and while people may not talk much about it um, because there's not a lot of value locked, right, per DeFi, um, but in terms of Oracle perspective, these use cases actually will have a lot of Oracle requests because imagine if they require random number generators for let's say AV dice roll, right? Or for AV item generated in game, right? It's actually quite a high frequency of uses um, for Oracle and that will actually accrue a lot of values to the Oracle itself. Interesting. I know very little about gaming, but every time I hear about it, it makes me want to <laughs> to, to try it out. Um, all right, we have another question. This is from Fly Best Flight Academy, who asks, when do you expect the mainnet um, actually to be used in real life situations? Right, so actually when will our Oracle be used, right? Um, really, really soon. Um, I can't keep the exact date, of course, um, it's not, because it's not a public information, um, but for our roadmap, as we said, we, um, we are just pending final audits. Um, for the, you know, the security audit um, for our code, because we want to make sure obviously whatever we put in the market is you know 100% safe, right? For our partner to use. Um, the best way for you to follow this is actually we have a DevNet, which is like a testnet, right? For our Oracle, um, which is actually being used by our you know obviously partners um, in using our Oracle. So that's a good indication of what is to come. So here's one from uh, Ramesh Joshi. He asks. Will Bant be implemented in, say, Solana or, say, Polkadot in the future, or is it mainly focused only on the Ethereum platform? Right. Um, I can say that we are pretty much focused on AV major blockchain um, right now. So, you know, as, as you have seen that we announced with Waves and Icon, um, all these different blockchain, um, we are, you know, working um, toward integration with them as well as the apps on top of them. There's another one from Seppel Merdas who asked one of a few minutes ago, if I remember correctly. Is Band Protocol planning to work with enterprises in the future, for example, names such as Google, Oracle, Swift, Microsoft, or any other huge ones? Hard to predict, right. I guess. But. <laughs> yeah, again, I'm not gonna, um, we can't, we, uh, I'm not permitted by my legal team to announce anything not public. Um, but of course, like I said, we are, you know, we aim to become a major Oracle solutions. Um, that means, you know, not only we work with DeFi, not only we work with blockchain projects, um, we do aim to work with enterprises, um, you know, um, can keep names, but obviously we are looking to drive our adoption over the next few months and years. Um, and that means we will need to work with some large enterprises, um, both for them to become part of our data providers. So think of, you know, some large um, enterprise data providers, they can start to provide data through that chain into it. So that's my contract and consume them, right? Um, as well as technology companies that you name them, you know, there are some use cases that we are exploring um, and yeah, once it's live, you know, you're gonna hear from us. Good. I wanted to now, since we've been doing this for 20 minutes, give another shout out if you guys wanna ask more questions. You can also go on YouTube. It's um, youtube.com slash quinmarketcapofficial. Although the questions really are flooding in. So here's, a, here's another one from YouTube um, from Daniel Kaltman. How has the experience been working with CZ and Binance Launchpad? Right, <laughs> I can ask about this a lot. <laughs> Seems like there's a lot of mystery around Binance. Um, no, I, I can only say good things. Um, I think I think you know they are really professional. Um, you know, probably one of the most professional players um, in the industry so far, um, and it's been a pleasure you know to be to be uh, working with them. Good. I mean, 
I won't say anything about them because <laughs> coin market cap, you know. Um, moving on, this is from our chat. This is from KJ, KJ, KJ again. The band protocol is based on a bonding curve that increases the value of the band as data users increase. Securing data usage later is the most important thing. What do you think about this in the team? I don't fully understand that question, but maybe you do. Right, um, maybe um, there are ones with the, um, all the users. So again, we got rid of the bonding curve before. Um, so the bonding curve originally was designed to issue the data set tokens, right? Because um, again, quick history, when we launch our band Oracle and when we design our band Oracle in mind, right? Our focus is that we wanna make sure it's as decentralized as possible. That's our number one key aspect, right? Um, and so our first version, we sort of over-engineered a little bit by introducing this bonding curve, this data set tokens to make sure we are, you know, 100% decentralized and it's really difficult and costly to attack, right? Um, and again, as I mentioned before, you know, it, it became clear that it had too much complexity for our end users, for token holders, for the app users. Um, so we got rid of that, yeah. But I guess related to that questions, um, band protocol securities does rely on the value of the band, right? Because if, you know, the, the staker right now, I mean, you look at the amount of people that stake band tokens, it's about 83% of the network, which is pretty high, right? And that means hundreds of millions of dollars is being locked into the band chain itself. That means if you really wanna attack band chain and Oracle, you would need more than $50 million or more, right? Particularly to, to actually attack, right? Um, and, and, and so, you know, that, that's why it's become much more secure right now um, for um, a lot of our D apps to trust us and decide using our Oracle. Here's one from Batman in regards to price a little bit. Um, what are your thoughts on the sudden price surge in the recent few months? Do you think it's validated from the necessity of oracles? Um, yeah, normally I don't comment on price, um, but I think, you know, um, in the past few months, um, I think we have done a number of, um, you know, good jobs in terms of, you know, securing key partnerships, um, in terms of really validate ourselves that we have the right product market fit, right? If you see the shift from the original model on top of Ethereum and band chain, um, you can clearly see that we have a lot and growing number of partners, not just in terms of, you know, um, the apps, right, but also major layer one blockchain, also major investors, also major exchanges, as well as a number of validators, like, you know, major staking pools um, that join us, right? If you look at our valid top validators, probably like 20% of them actually overlap with major blockchain, like Cosmos, like Chainlink, um, like other different other validators as well. So that's a good validation because obviously, you know, when they run our band chain, they incur costs, right? In order to maintain all these infrastructures. And that's a good validation to the market as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, in the past few months, I think we have grown and proved ourselves um, that, you know, in the past market tend to discredit Asian-based projects and Asian-based projects tend to be undervalued for a while. Um, I think Kyber is a good example, right? Um, you know, Zero X was priced much higher than um, Kyber, despite the fact that Kyber on-chain activities actually is quite significant, right? Um, and then again, they proved themselves to have the right product market fit and that's how they scale up, right? Um, I think it's a similar story to us. Interesting, I hadn't made that connection before, but something to think about. Um, another question from you two is Anthony, and he asked, how is the band chain decentralized Oracle network incentivized to fulfill Oracle requests? Right, um, so our validators or data providers stake the band token, right? Um, in order to become data providers. Now, every time they receive data requests, if they don't respond and they have doubt time, they risk getting jail and actually get their token slashed, right? And this ranges between, you know, 0.5 to even up to 5% if they act maliciously. So that's actually quite a big, big incentive for them to actually not act maliciously, right? And actually respond to all the requests. That's the direct penalties. Indirectly, again, let's imagine one particular um, validator you know, stake about 3 million band tokens, right? At this current price, that's about 40, 50 million worth of you know, band tokens. If he doesn't respond and it give bad reputation to the band chain, two things gonna happen. Obviously people will lose trust in band, the band token value will go down and you know, 50 million worth of their holding will significantly go down as well. Number two, if people don't trust them and don't stake toward their pool, then essentially they will lose future revenue as well as they cannot become a data provider in the future, right? So there's a lot of direct penalties 
as well as indirect penalty through all this you know, um, token economic incentive that we engineers almost like a delegated proof of stake blockchain. So I have a question that was seated earlier uh, before this started. This is, do you think Band has come up with the best Oracle design? <laughs> right. Um, so I think, you know, I don't think we can claim that, you know, we have the best design, nor that anyone is perfect. I mean, you know, with the pace of innovation in this industry um, and the evolving needs, you know, from, uh, from new DeFi and smart contract applications, you know, I think we are seeing that it's really an iterative process, right? Just like how we said, you know, band version one doesn't work out, you know, we iterate to, to band version two, and now we see much more product market fit, right? So we are pretty much taking up this um, startup mindset that, you know, nobody will be perfect, things will evolve. What we need to do is we need to learn fast to this growing need from different applications across different, different blockchain, right? Um, and then we learn fast and we trade fast, right? Um, and I think to us, this is one of the best um, qualities, you know, for, for our project founders. And we are confident that whatever the future holds, you know, in terms of the requirement, we'll be there to serve them. Here's another one live now from the audience, from YouTube. This is from Bharat Tiagi. What is BAN's upcoming project outside of DeFi? BAN project outside of DeFi. Um, I think it touched on that, you know, a lot of gaming applications um, that require random number generators. I think one good example you can take a look is that recently we integrated with BED protocol, um, essentially, you know, a uh, uh, betting application <laughs> by names. Um, and, and so that is one particular example outside of DeFi, which is a good use case of Oracle because there's a lot of frequent um, usages of our Oracle. I have another one from Batman, but he, he just has a lot of questions, or she. Um, when the mainnet becomes live, do you think the data request rewards for stakers will be higher than the current 15 to 16%? Um, oh, you mean the in terms of the reward to the, the staker, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. I mean, it's additive, meaning you know the 50% the inflation that we receive right now as a staker essentially are coming from block rewards, right? Just like Ethereum or Bitcoin, right? On top of those block reward, now you will get transaction fee or essentially the query fee from all this Oracle. So yes, whatever you get right now, you will still continue to get, right? But on top of that, you also earn from all this query fee um, that the app pay in order to you know, um, request data, right? Here's another one that's more also specific about the, what's going on um, from Pedro Bergamini. How many tokens will be released from the team this year? You can answer that right. Um, so you know you can check some of those figures on on the Binance resource. Um, originally, that was well. I mean, right now there is going to be um, some release on September seventeen. Um, I can say that our team is long term committed. So you know we are going to be announcing how we're going to be deal with how how we're going to deal with those tokens from the team and the foundation publicly in the next um, you know, few days or, or weeks um, on how we're gonna be dealing with that. Um, but again, as I said, you know, we are still really early in our journey as an Oracle um, and DeFi and the whole blockchain industry. We are really long-term focused and long-term committed. So, you know, that would be some good news. So I'm gonna give one last shout out for last questions. We'll have about time for five or 10 more minutes. So if anyone's on YouTube, CoinMarketCap official or on our CMC chat or Twitter, we'll be looking. And for now, I'll ask another one that was seated earlier. Um, is there actually a benefit to band being a second mover after, you know, say chain link? Right. Yes. So I think there's always a mystery, right? Of being first is good. Um, but I mean, if you look at you know, Facebook, for example, um, they're not the first, you know, they are my space there. There was a high five before that, right? Google also did not invent the search engine, right? Um, I, I, I don't subscribe to the view that Yes, there are advantages for sure for the first mover, but being a second mover is actually actually pretty good because you know I guess you have the benefit of learning, right? You have the benefit of um, I guess learning what the first mover did. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, right? Obviously, you know I think every everyone would know that if you want to decide Oracle, you would need to look at what other Oracle is doing, right? If you want to decide new layer one, scalable layer one, you would want to look at what Ethereum is doing. Okay. You're not just going to blindly go into developing something um, without looking at your competitors, um, similarly to what they do. Right? Um, so I think there's a lot of that benefit that we learn um, of those lessons. Um, I can give you one example. Right? Um, when we first launched, right, 
Um, our first design came from the fact that in 2017, data request was really fixed. I mean, there were only two data types, price of Bitcoin, price of Ethereum, right? There was not a lot of flexibility. There was not a lot of you know, custom data requests from all this DeFi. Now in 2020, right, the data request is super customized. You see a lot more support for different crypto assets um, being added, right, into different DeFi. You see support for, let's say, traditional asset like stock, bond, commodities, you know, um, being added. You see random number generators. You see, you know, real world events that are really customized. Um, one example is, um, you know, some DS want a result of a cricket Indian league, right? Um, Indian cricket league, right? That's a really customized data request. Um, and some of the Oracle, like even in our previous design, was really fixed. If you want some new data, you need to manually coordinate with our nodes, um, data providers to say, hey, can you provide this data? Or, you know, you need some node um, to provide that data, um, that data right? Um, that's why in our current design, we learn from that mistake um, and we make our data um, Oracle super flexible that anyone can write an Oracle script to request any type of data they want from any public endpoint. Right, and that make us, you know, um, easily serve all these different data requests from any of the apps across different blockchain. Right, that's I, I guess is um, one particular example that being a second mover is also um, has an advantage. Right, the bottom line is we learn um, and we iterate fast. So there's one thing I wanted to bring up, which I maybe should have led with, but for everyone watching, Coin Market Cap launched their Earn product today where you can learn more about a cryptocurrency, uh, watch some videos, take a quiz, and then earn that token. Band Protocol is our first one um, to have an educational campaign. Do you want to talk a little bit about what that, why you think it's important to educate the world about Band and pay people <laughs> for learning about it? Sure. Um, I think, I, I think um, related, actually related to the first question, I think talking about first mover, second mover right now is, is this way too early? I mean, as an industry, we are really, really early. If you look at DeFi, even though people look at us as, oh, we have $4 billion worth of you know, money lockup. We, if you look at number of users, there's only a few users who actually do that, right? Um, we're not even reached 0.01% of the population using this you know, um, DeFi or you know, some other contract yet. So we're super early. Um, and, and that's why by being early, we need to educate people more, especially the newcomers, right? Um, by being in the blockchain industry, the volatilities attract traders. The volatilities attract you know newcomers that try to make money, which is good and bad, right? Um, the bad thing is, of course, you know, you, you if people blindly buy some tokens without knowing what it, it does or does, doesn't know anything about the projects, people can lose money. People can you know um, you know it's it's really bad, right? If people just follow some influencers on in the internet and buy some to random tokens, um, and that's why for us at Band Protocol. Um, we firmly believe that everyone that want to buy band tokens or buy any tokens need to be fully educated about that particular tokens and project, right? It's really important that they learn about the importance of Oracle, especially in relation to DeFi right now. They need to know how band protocol work. They need to know how band token works um, before they purchase anything, right? Related to band or, you know, be part of our communities. Um, and that's why we make a conscious effort here to partner with CoinMarketCap and launch this first campaign. And I think over the next few months, we're going to be doing you know, a lot more of these to educate more users and make sure that once you know, millions of people start to come into this blockchain industry, they have a good place to reference, they have a good place to learn about it. All right, I think that will probably be our last question. People are still kind of talking and asking about price online, but like <laughs> those questions are kind of unanswerable. So if there's anything else you wanna to say <laughs> to the audience, um, Band, who, who, is, who commented? Band Brazil wanted a shout out, so I can shout out to Band Brazil. If there's anything else you want to say to the, the band world before we sign off? Sure, sure. I think, you know, obviously the recent price action, you know, draw a lot of attention to us. Um, the recently, um, you know, we recently got listed on Coinbase Pro um, and Huobi really put us on the global map. Um, and, and, you know, we are really humbled by that. Um, and, and what we want, really want to say is we're, we're still really early. Um, we're still really early in terms of adoption. We're still really early in terms of the entire DeFi and blockchain industry. Um, our team is really long-term focused and we are really you know, humbled by all of your support. We are looking to grow our communities along with you guys. Um, I hope you guys learn more about BAN. I hope you guys go you know, take the lessons, actually learn about BAN, not asking people for answers because you know, we see people doing that <laughs> um, with Coinbase Earn as well. Um, and so you know, really educate yourself. 
Um, and, and if you believe in Oracle, if you believe in our mission, you know, join us in our communities, we always welcome and we want to make sure that our communities is the most friendly, the most constructive um, and supportive of everyone in, in the blockchain industry. Um, and so, yeah, thanks again. Yeah, thanks for coming on for this AMA. Have a good rest of your day. <laughs> All right, cheers.